Hello, my name is Greg Tilka, and I'm an extension plant pathologist and nematologist at Iowa State University. And I'd like to talk or explain to you how we would check a field for the presence of soybean cyst nematode. Now, soybean cyst nematode is a major problem throughout the Midwest and even other parts of the United States and Canada in terms of soybean production. And during the season, we can check for SCN or soybean cyst nematode by looking for little white females on the roots. But once those females fill up with eggs, they die, and the female body hardens off and turns brown, and it falls off the root and is present in the soil. So another way to test for soybean cyst nematode is to collect a soil sample and try to recover those dead females or cysts of SCN that are full of eggs. And fall is an ideal time to check fields by soil sampling and then having those samples tested for SCN. One key point to remember in terms of deciding what field should be sampled for the presence of SCN is we have very good research now that indicates that fields during the season may look perfectly healthy and yet be infested with soybean cyst nematode and also suffer some yield loss due to SCN. So it's important to test fields for the presence of SCN even if you don't suspect that they might be present. Now for fall soil sampling, what we would use is a very simple soil sampling probe such as we have right here and then a bucket. And it's just a matter of collecting soil samples or soil cores in the appropriate way uh, and then having those submitted to a laboratory that's able to process it as far as testing for SCN. Now we could sample fields that had soybeans grown in them this current season as we are right now we're standing in a soybean field but a little bit later we'll also talk about how to sample a field that had corn grown in it and, and one might wonder why would we sample for soybean cyst nematode in a field that had corn grown in a particular growing season, well, oftentimes those fields are then rotated to soybeans next year, and it's very easy and good to test for uh, soybean cyst nematode in the fall before you're going to grow a soybean crop. But let's talk a little bit about how to sample a soybean field uh, for the presence of soybean cyst nematode in the fall. And reasons you would do this might be if you had uh, low soybean yields and you don't really know why, or you've heard that soybean cyst nematode is in the area, um, or you, you're just curious about the fields uh, and want to check to make sure you do have it or you don't have it. As I said earlier, the key is uh, use a soil probe, and we want to collect a little bit of soil from many different places. So by a little bit of soil, I mean one soil core. Typically, we would want to go six to eight inches deep, and do that in kind of a zigzag pattern throughout a 20 acre area. We generally don't like to have samples collected from any larger than a 20 acre area. So if the field is larger, if it's 40 or 60 acres, you would want to divide that field up mentally into four sections and collect a separate 20 core soil sample from each section. Now to collect the soil core, it's very simple. You use a soil probe like this, and you generally would like to find the old soybean row, and that soybean row is right here, and then we would just simply take the probe, move away any crop debris that's there, and then angle a few inches away from the, the uh, soybean row, angle the probe down underneath into the root zone, or what was the root zone for that soybean crop. And what will come out, is a core of soil more or less that looks like this. This is the typical six to eight inches deep that we would like and you would want to do that just work your way arbitrarily through the field and every 50 or so paces stop somewhere and if it's a soybean field angle your probe underneath the old soybean row collect this soil and then have a bucket with you and then you would simply put the soil core in so the, the goal is to end up with a bucket full of 20 good 8 inch deep soil cores. Now it doesn't do much good to collect all those soil cores if the soil from those cores don't all make it into the bag that you send into a laboratory. So another very important point is with your hand or with a screwdriver or the tip of the probe 
get into the bucket and break open or break all those soil cores, break them up and mix it with your hand in order to thoroughly mix the sample before you fill up the bag uh, and send it off to the laboratory. As I said, it's not much good to collect 20 soil cores if when you pour the soil out of the bag, only five or six soil cores tumble into the bag and get submitted. It's very important to mix those soil cores, break them up, and end up with a soil sample that then flows pretty well as you pour the soil out of the bucket into the bag. Collecting a soil sample for soybean cyst nematode from a field of harvested corn such as this is very similar to how we sampled a field of harvested soybeans, except it's a little more simple. It's just a matter of clearing away the crop debris with your foot and then collecting a soil core that's eight inches deep. In collecting a soil sample for soybean cyst nematode from a field of harvested corn, it really doesn't matter much if you collect the soil cores from underneath the crop row where the corn was growing or from between the row, in the inner row area. But one thing to consider is it's a little better if the soil samples are collected after fall tillage is done because chiseling that corn residue or some fall tillage process will tend to mix up the soil and mix up the soybean cyst nematode and you may get a little more representative of a result from a soil sample but certainly there's nothing wrong with collecting soil cores from the corn field even before fall tillage is done. Within harvested soybean fields there is one other technique that some people use and that is to collect soil cores from high risk areas of the field. We've known through research now that there are certain areas of the field that you're more likely to find soybean cyst nematode first. And those are somewhat common sense areas where you would expect soil to be brought into the field, like a field entryway or a low spot that tends to get a lot of surface runoff water and soil moved, or an area of the field that has been previously flooded. Those are all areas that might be worth sampling first because those are what we call high-risk areas of having soybean cyst nematode introduced. Another area we know through research results uh, that it's very common to find soybean cyst nematode at fairly high numbers is uh, spots of high pH soil. For some reason, soybean cyst nematode numbers become very high in areas of the field that have high pH. And by high, I mean pH of 7.5 to 8.0. So if you have fields with areas uh, of soil that have that high of pH, you, it might be worth uh, checking the, those areas of the field first. And then finally, another common area where soybean cyst nematode may show up first is along a fence line. And the reason for that is anything that moves soil can move soybean cyst nematode, and that includes wind erosion. And wind-blown soil tends to hit, soy, uh, hit a fence line and then the soil falls right there near the fence line and soybean cyst nematode can be found uh, early in fields uh, along those fence lines. One final thing to remember in sampling your fields for soybean cyst nematode is no amount of not finding the nematode will prove that it's not there. What I mean by that is our research shows that about one-fourth of all the soil samples that test zero for soybean cyst nematode actually have some low level of the pest present. So if you test a sample and it comes back zero eggs of soybean cyst nematode, you're probably just fine for the next soybean crop, but keep in mind that it could be there and in future years when soybeans are again grown in that field, consider collecting another set of high quality soil samples from your field.